I'm Nikita Namjershi. And I'm Zach Akil. As applied AI engineers, we spend a lot of time building machine learning applications on Google Cloud. But with such an extensive set of tools available, it can be hard to know exactly how to use each of these tools and what they're good for, even for us. So we decided to use machine learning to make our jobs just a little bit more easy by building a tool to help answer these kind of questions for us. For example, how many languages does the Translation API support? Translation API Basic uses Google's Neural Machine Translation technology to instantly translate texts into more than 100 languages. Question and answering systems like these are incredibly helpful for quickly extracting valuable information from documents that can sometimes be too difficult to read through manually. Let me give you an example. Imagine you've just joined a new company and you've probably got a whole bunch of questions. Questions like, how do I access the printers? Or how do I get parking validated? Or where's the bike storage? Today, maybe that data is stored somewhere within an internal wiki, but wouldn't it be cool if you had access to a chatbot that could find the answers in that wiki for you? Today, we'll show you how to build a question answering system on Google Cloud based on your data. But first, let's start with a little bit of context on two NLP concepts, embeddings and nearest neighbor search. And don't worry if these concepts are totally new to you, you don't need to be an expert. Embeddings are a way of representing data as points in space where the locations are semantically meaningful. This data could be pretty much anything. It could be text, images, videos, audio, users. And nearest neighbor search is the technique that you use to figure out how similar data points are. One of the most famous embeddings is word to vec which was created by Google in 2013. word to vec takes as input a word, and it returns an n-dimensional coordinate or vector. If you plot these word vectors in space, you'll notice that synonyms are clustered together. You can see an example over here, where similar words cluster together in space. So we have peach near apple, a little further away is pizza, but then words about animals like leopard and dog are clustered together a little further away. Embedding single words is not that interesting, but if we embedded entire articles, we could create a function that given one news article recommends semantically similar articles, or if we embedded movie plots, we could recommend similar movies. So how do we get from vectors to recommendations? Well, if we compute the distance between two embedded data points, we'll be able to get a sense of how similar they are. Distance in this case is a trigonometric measure, such as Euclidean distance or cosine distance. And it turns out you can do a similar thing with questions and answers. Or in our case, given a question about Google Cloud, return an answer from the docs. So to build this question answering system, we'll start by embedding paragraphs from the docs and build up a database. To answer a query, our system will map the query to the embedding space and then search among all of those database embeddings to find the ones that are closest to the query. Closest in this case means the best answer. And of course, to do this search, we'll use the nearest neighbor algorithm. So let's take a look at how we can use Google ML products to help us build the system. To build our question answering system, we'll start with a set of reference documents. Then we'll extract that text and split it into paragraphs. And we'll use these as our answers. We'll do this pre-processing within the Vertex AI workbench and store the results in cloud storage. After we have our text chunks, we'll need to embed them. Instead of training an embedding model from scratch, we're actually going to use a pre-trained text embedding model directly from TensorFlow Hub. We're actually going to use the universal sentence encoder, or use model, which encodes text into high dimensional vectors that can be used for text classification, semantic similarity, clustering, and other language tasks. This module actually contains two embedding models, one for embedding the questions and one for embedding the answers. We're actually going to import both of these encoding models to Vertex AI model registry which is a repository where you can manage the lifecycle of all your ML models. Now, we're going to use these models to embed a lot of text in our reference documents, alongside all of the questions that the users will ask on the fly. 
To run these prediction jobs, we're going to use the Vertex AI prediction service. And once all of our reference text is embedded as vectors, we'll use the Vertex AI matching engine. Now, this will store those vectors and perform nearest neighbor search on them at scale. Then we'll use Firestore for storing the text answers themselves, which is what will get returned to the user. To tie all of these pieces together, we'll write a function in Python for handling user requests and calling our ML system. This code will be served in a cloud function. Finally, we want to actually talk to our application. So we're going to use the text-to-speech and speech-to-text APIs to transcribe what we're saying and have the system produce spoken responses. All right, Zach, should we build this thing? Let's do it. All right, so our first step is going to be to download the reference documents, and we'll break them up into paragraph-sized text chunks. We'll do all of this pre-processing within a Vertex AI Workbench managed notebook. So here in the notebook, you can see some examples of the text that we'll be embedding. And we'll save these text chunks out to a CSV file in cloud storage. Next, we need to download our question answering sentence encoder module from TensorFlow Hub. You can see here in the hub that this module actually contains two models, one to embed the questions and the other to embed the answers. And we can test this out in our notebook and call the model right here locally. So let's try that. If we pass in the text, what's the meaning of life, the universe, and everything, we'll see that what we get back is this 512 dimensional embedding vector. Now, these numbers don't mean a whole lot to us, but to the use model, they are semantically meaningful. Now, we could use this model to embed text right here in our notebook, but because we have so many text snippets to embed, this would take forever, and it would use a lot of memory. Plus, even though we're going to embed all of our answers in advance, we need to be able to embed questions from users on the fly as they ask them. This isn't really something we can do from a notebook. So instead, we'll import our models to Vertex AI model registry, and then we'll run prediction jobs with Vertex AI predictions. So let's kick this off with the answer model. We can use the Vertex AI Python SDK to upload the model. So that's what we're doing right here in the notebook. And to serve our model, we'll specify the optimized TensorFlow runtime container for running our prediction jobs, which leverages optimization techniques used internally at Google for lower latency predictions. If we go to the Cloud Console, we'll see that our model has been created here in the model registry. Now, we want the answer text to be embedded ahead of time. So to do this, we'll start a batch prediction job. We'll pass in the data that we saved earlier to a CSV file, and there is a lot of data, so this could take a while. But we'll receive an email when it completes. So let's specify our hardware profile. We can add a GPU. We'll click Create, and let's start this prediction job. When the job is finished, we can go to Cloud Storage, and we'll see that the output is the text alongside the vectors themselves. So here's the text, and right after that, you can see the embeddings. OK, our answers are ready to go. Next, we need to upload our question model. While we embedded the answers ahead of time, we need to embed the questions on the fly as our users ask them. To get these embeddings with low latency, we'll deploy our question embedding model to an endpoint. And we can hit this endpoint like any other REST endpoint. So that's what I'm doing in the notebook right here. Deploying takes a few minutes, but once it's ready, we'll see our model in, and the endpoint in the UI alongside our answer model in the model registry. Now that we have our database embeddings and our models deployed, Zach is going to show us how to implement some blazingly fast nearest neighbor search on these embeddings. Thank you, Nikita, for embedding all of that data. The way that we find the best answer for a question is to do a similarity search on those vectors. But it turns out even though the similarity metric is just a distance calculation like dot product, for large data sets with hundreds of millions or even billions of vectors, performing this nearest neighbor search is a computationally challenging task and requires sophisticated approximation algorithms if you want to do it quickly and at scale. However, thanks to cutting edge Google research, Vertex AI matching engine is a fully managed solution that does exactly that. 
To create a matching engine instance, we can run a script from our Vertex AI Workbench notebook that will create a cloud storage bucket to store our vectors. We also have to configure the dimensions of the embeddings that we're going to be searching through, which in our case is going to be 512. Next, we need to prepare our answer embeddings to be uploaded into Matching Engine, which expects a text file of dictionaries with keys ID and embedding. Here is an example of what the data looks like just before it gets ingested into Matching Engine. Next, we'll upload that data into a cloud storage bucket and kick off a script to tell Matching Engine to start ingesting the embeddings. You can see within the configuration, uh, the main thing we have to declare is the location of our storage, which is there. Behind the scenes, Matching Engine is building indexes so that our embeddings can be queried quickly and at scale. Here is our Matching Engine instances within the Cloud Console. And we can even see the indexes when they have actually finished ingesting the content. And they're all visible in the console as well. Finally, to query Matching Engine, we can pass it a single vector, and it will return the IDs of all the nearest neighbor vectors and their distances. We need to be able to connect those IDs back to the actual answer text. So we've also created a Firestore database to store the actual text of our answers because in the end, a user wants the actual answer text and not just some random ID. Here's what the answers look like within Firestore. And you can see that within Firestore, we have the text string and the ID. And if you're not familiar, Firestore is an easy to use serverless database on Google Cloud. In the end, these IDs are what's going to connect the text back to the IDs from the Vertex AI matching engine. To tie all of these pieces together, I've written a Python function that first takes as input the user question text, then feeds that text into our model that's going to produce an embedding on Vertex AI. That embedding is then fed into the matching engine, which is going to return back all of the nearest neighbors. And we're going to take the IDs from those nearest neighbors and get the original text from Firestore. Then at the end, return back the original text back to the user. To get this whole system production ready, I've just thrown all this code into a cloud function so that we can head it as a REST endpoint. We can call this REST endpoint from pretty much anywhere we want, like a Jupyter Notebook, a web app, or even a chatbot. To round off this tool, we've added the speech-to-text API and text-to-speech API so that we can literally talk to our question answering system. Let's try it out. What does Vertex AI Feature Store do? Vertex AI Feature Store provides a centralized repository for organizing, storing, and serving ML features. Cool. So today we've showed you how you can take the best of Google ML and create your own scalable questioning answering system to unlock valuable information from your unstructured data. We hope you enjoyed our demo. Cheers. Goodbye. Bye.